Inside this video right here, we're gonna tackle a respiratory case with a practice question. Then I'm gonna tell you the why behind it. Here we go. Hey everyone, it's Evan here, the paramedic coach. Got the question behind me here. We're gonna dive into it. Then our lecture now. If you're watching this video, hit the like button down below, smash that like button, and hit the subscribe button down below as well. Here it is, question of the day. A, B, C, or D, which of the following is a risk factor for pulmonary embolism? Here it is. Is it A, young, thin, tall men? Is it B, working in shipyards? Is it C, pregnancy? Or D, alcoholism? A, B, C, or D, if you're watching this video right now, comment down below. Do not skip ahead. Is it A, B, C, or D? Comment down below what your thought process, what are you thinking? I wanna hear from you. Now, here's what we have, okay? This is a, goes to the heart of what I talk about is you have to understand the why the process behind the medical or traumatic emergency that we're talking about in EMS and makes the questions easier. So if you understand pulmonary embolism, then this is pretty easy, okay? Now, we'll see who got it right in, in the comments, but check me out here. Young, thin, tall men, A, eh? that has to do with different emergency. That has to do with spontaneous pneumothoraxes. Med a medical pneumothorax has a risk factor for a different respiratory emergency. That is not the correct answer. So we cross this off. Okay. Let's move over to alcoholism. Now, alcoholism, obviously, we know can do destruction in the body in many ways. But that's mainly, we look, that, there's many areas of the body, but mainly we look at the liver, pancreas, we know about varices right? Could be GI issues, stomach, right? We're not looking at that as this medical emergency. So alcoholism is crossed off. We're looking for, remember, the exam is never trying to trick you. National Registry, it's not trying to trick you. It's trying to see if you know the information cold or not, okay? Now, is it working in shipyards or pregnancy? Again, this and this, what I've done here is a clear-cut example of do you know the content or not? Because working in shipyards, that's a risk factor of COPD. The answer is pregnancy, and I'm going to explain why in my next segment right here. So now that we've done our question of the day, I want to introduce this series called Know It Cold. What I mean by that is you will now understand the why behind these questions so the questions become easy. Now, there's four parts I'm going to introduce here. Number one is what is what we're talking about? Two, are there any risk factors? Three, what are the signs and symptoms? And four, how do we actually treat it in EMS when we have the patient in front of us? So let's start with number one here with pulmonary embolism. Let's say I have a DVT, a deep vein thrombosis, a clot deep in the vein inside of my calf. A little piece of plaque breaks off. If you understand heart blood flow, that piece of plaque will travel up, go into the IVC, roll over to your right atrium, down, past the valve, into your right ventricle, okay? Where does the right ventricle pair up with? The pulmonary artery. And that is exactly where that piece of clot is going to have a stop right in the side of the pulmonary artery tracks. Depending how, how big that uh, piece of plaque is, that clot is, that's gonna determine how bad the event is, okay? So that is how a pulmonary embolism actually takes place in the body, right? It is a lung attack, just like a stroke. It's a brain attack and a heart attack, obviously. Well, that's a classic thing everybody knows, right? Makes sense? It's a it's a clot inside of the main vessel that feeds our lungs, the pulmonary artery tract. Okay. Now two, 
are there any risk factors? Well, that was the main crux of the question. See, the question was hitting on right here. Do you know the risk factors for PE, yes or no? Some of you may have, some of you may haven't. That's why you're here training, happy you're here. Now, risk factors for PE include bed rest, long plane rides, train rides, any period, long period of stasis, staying still. If someone had a recent vascular surgery, birth control, pregnancy, those are what we call hypercoagulable states, okay? Cancer is another one, right? Smoking, right? So if we put it all together, what would be the, <laughs> this would be a, a picture for you. Uh, what would be like the worst case scenario of a risk factor patient? Smoking? They're pregnant or on birth control? while having cancer, and they just got off a, a let's say, 18-hour flight, and they didn't move. You with me? Makes sense? Okay, cool. That's a way to remember it. Number three, what are the actual signs and symptoms of someone having a pulmonary embolism? Well, the first thing I want to talk about is, remember I said, what if it's a big event, meaning it's, a, it's, a, it's really high up in the pulmonary artery tracts? What could happen? Well, they end up in cardiac arrest. So you, you, they might not have any signs in them, they're just in cardiac arrest, okay? It's one of the h and T's for my medics, okay? Now, when someone's awake and talking to you, what are they gonna present with? The, here's the two main things. Tachycardia, they're gonna be coughing up blood, and then it's gonna be hypoxia. So, let's say their heart rate's 120, 130, Oh, I, oh, I have a hard time breathing, I'm coughing up blood, and their SpO2 is low, it's below 94, or lower than their normal at least if it's early on, or smaller one, right? Those are the main hallmark signs symptoms, chest pain, difficulty breathing, it could be, even be a near syncope, like they're going to pass out because the breathing event is getting worse. Look for signs of respiratory depression and any other factors going on here of accessory muscle use if the breathing gets worse, okay? Now the final piece, how do we treat it? First thing you're gonna do, if you see an exam, if someone has a low FPO2, they need oxygen. So that's always gonna be step one. Now are we, are we gonna solve pulmonary embolism uh, out in the field? Unfortunately, no. That is going to be handled in hospital, usually by heparin, by heparin, okay? And sometimes, if we talk about pregnancy, if a patient is pregnant and they are at a high risk of having a PE, they may even be started on heparin because they're at high risk, right? You'll see uh, just another different medication, but it's an idea for you. You'll also see patients on at-home Lovenox or they have to be on bed rest and they'll get injections of Lovenox. Another drug you might want to know about hear about. My friends, now we know it cold. So now if you get a question about pulmonary embolism, you're ready for it. I got one more message for you. I really hope you enjoyed our question of the day and our know it cold on pulmonary embolism. Now my friends, if you want to tackle the whole host of other medical and traumatic emergencies you need to know cold, click the link down below. I'll give you a lifetime access to my video study course. You can see the sections here on the screen. I cover anatomy and physiology, EMT, advanced EMT, paramedic, national registry prep, prep for school, and help you in between master school and clinicals. Hit the link down below to grab that, and I will see you next time in our next question of the day, and know it cold. I'll see you there. Don't waste any time. Don't, don't be hesitant and just do it, because I know this program works. And I know it's, it got me to where I was, where it's been a year without school, from EMT to, hey, I passed my test in 70 questions, like, go for it, you could do it. Like, do not hesitate and don't waste any time. People that don't know you, they need to. They need this program. This program is not a, a choice. To me, this program is a have to. You take uh, uh, thousands and thousands of pages in the books and you just narrow it down and just make everything simple I pass the registry. So uh, it's, it's, it's great content, man. I promise you it's worth it. I took this with three weeks left to go in my class and I just, I'm not sure if I would have been able to pass my course 
or the NREMT first try without this course. The fact, like when I was taking the, the national and I would read the question and I, I would be like, whoa, Evan literally just went over this in the car. So it's, it really, it helps. I got to the point where I was just ready to spill all my knowledge onto this freaking test. So I'm like, you know what, man, just go ahead, go for it. Open it up, boom, congratulations, you passed. It was um, outside of having my children, man, it's probably the, like the happiest day of my life, bro, to be honest with you.